Oh yeah, what's up guys? It's Cruz Pike. My friends call me Big C. Back in action today, we're talking about MMORPGs. That's right, for you guys that are in your 30s and 40s, do you remember back 10, 20 years ago when we didn't have families and wives and kids and responsibilities and we'd play video games for 12 hours a day? Yeah, <laughs> I'm guilty. I know George is too. I know you're watching this, George. You did it too. What's up, bro? Uh, but jokes aside, guys, I want to talk to you about some of the best upcoming MMORPGs, not only this year, but in the near future. And these aren't my opinions. This is going to be a bunch of heartbeat moments based off of the lazy peons' opinions. And this guy is a hardcore MMORPG guy. He lives in Thailand. He walks the walk. He talks the talk. This is an fantastic video. We've got some of the highlights from it using the heartbeat tool. Links in the description below. Let's get cracking, starting off with Ashes of Creation. All right, so let's kick it off here. I'm on h.ki or h key, and you'll see here that right here we're going to kick it off with Ashes of Creation. I'm going to click on the first moment, which starts pretty quick at the four second mark. Let's get this cracking. I'm going to turn the volume on here, and on the right side before I hit play, you'll see here I've got all of these moments that I've selected uh, out of the Lazy Peons video. So let's kick it off. Here we go. A Mo's video where I talk about all the games that could release in 2024, but realistically will be perpetually pushed back until all the hype for the game has been bled dry. Yeah, real talk here. The games are set to launch in one year, and then, you know, because it's an MMORPG, three years later, you're still waiting for it. But uh, anyways, let's keep going. Whilst 2023 was a decent year for new MMORPG announcements, yeah. we didn't exactly have a whole lot of releases. Surely 2024 will be better, right? <laughs> Keep in mind some of the games mentioned in this video will never actually come out, and the ones that do will likely disappoint you. So there you go. Lower your expectations accordingly. <laughs> a little bit of a dour start, but uh, in the MMORPG world, uh, a lot of people have been burned by a lot of games. So uh, let's kick, kick it off here. I'm going to click on the first moment for Ashes of Creation that I found interesting. Ashes of Creation. In 2023, Ashes has made amazing progress and over the past few months of development update live streams has shown multiple core systems working. Yeah. From the caravan system to crafting, player housing, world boss fights, the event system, and most recently, a big improvement to the game's combat with the new Ranger class gameplay update. Yeah. Ashes is a sand park MMO catering to both PvP and PvE players. That's going to be nice. So for you... World of Warcraft PvPers that are, are kind of itching for something, this has the potential right there. And the PvE, which is well, pretty much all the population really that plays this game, it's all going to be here. So in theory, this is looking pretty good. Let's kick it forward to the business model, which does appeal to me. Self, due to its fair business model, going with the good old sub fee, no box cost and cosmetic only cash shop approach with zero pay to win. All right, so you heard it there. There's no box fee, subscription fee style. So, I mean, it's not even World of Warcraft-y where you have to pay for the game and the, up and the upgrade, at least as of now. And uh, no pay to win. How nice is that, hey? Cosmetics only. So it just sounds like a win all around. Let's kick forward a little bit here. And it's going to talk about the Alpha 2 and when it kicks off. Overall, Ashes stands out as one of the most ambitious MMORPGs on the horizon, with Alpha 2 confirmed for Q3 2024. As for a full release date, I'd have to speculate late 2025 or even 2026, but it's really hard to tell. So there you go. It's going to be having a Q3, which I guess could be any time between like right up to the end of September, I suppose. I'm just trying to think. Yeah, September, October, November. Yeah, I can count. I got this. So there you go. And it could be in 2025, 2026. There's no hard date yet. But overall, it looks pretty damn good. Let's skip forward now. The second game that I really have a, a pretty good interest in is called Pax Die. And this is a medieval, based on a medieval legend. It's quite the idea here. Let's kick forward. Pax Day is an upcoming social sandbox MMORPG set in a vast fantasy world inspired by medieval legends. Nice. Embracing a cloud-native MMO concept, the game allows players to seamlessly play on any screen or device. In terms, There you go, so that's one big win, any screen or device, and it's Pax Day, not Pax Die, sorry, I, uh, my, uh, my, my Latin is, is not up to snuff, let's just, let's just leave it at that. Let's kick forward a little more and check out a little more on this game. Of gameplay, the thing that sticks out for me the most with Pax Day is its player created settlements. The building in this game looks absolutely insane and is likely to be best in genre in this aspect. All you Valheimers and various 
Crafting survival types, you're going to want to take a look at that. This has that built into the game. And if he says it's one of the best ones he's seen, he doesn't BS. So it's definitely worth a look. Pax Day basically seems like it'll be a medieval EVE Online with a big focus okay. on resource gathering, crafting, exploration, and a mix of both PvP and PvE. The recent alpha demonstrated promising progress. And Okay, so PvP and PvE, and it's already been in alpha. Let's hear the last part here, though. Fortunately, I didn't get invited to the playtest, hence why I didn't cover it on my channel when every other content creator did. Okay, so that could be a red flag. If he wasn't invited and everyone else was, that does not make a lot of sense to me. I have no opinion on that other than what the heck. So anyways, there's the second one. Let's get forward a little bit more. The next one's called codename ghost we're gonna have to go over a little minute forward here but it's gonna be worth it after leaving riot games ghost crawler created fantastic pixel castle studio and started the development of a game with the code name ghost after receiving a sizable investment from netease so yeah just a quick uh, heads up there the fella here he left riot games because riot games has or had i don't know it's kind of out there but they had an mmorpg in the pipeline as far as anyone could tell but what's going on with that and where it's at in the development cycle or what it's about or really anything is really kind of a uh, nobody really knows so anyways this is ghost he started his own uh, his own studio and here we go the game is still in the very early stages of development but according to ghost crawler they want to bring back central pillars of the mmo experience nice. such as playing with friends and building a community as mmos have moved too far towards solo adventuring so I gotta give him a, I gotta get it, I gotta give him credit on that. That's that has been my experience as well. When I played World of Warcraft and I started out, it was all about friends and the experience with your people, not solo adventuring alone. That's what Skyrim's for. <laughs> all right, let's kick forward a little bit here. He's gonna talk about the shard system. The peculiarities of Ghost will be its shard system, where the player will alternate between private realms called blue shards, which will have a similar experience to games such as V Rising, and public red shards, which will have a more traditional MMORPG experience. So there you heard it. It's going to have multiple realms there, PvP, PvE. It sounds pretty darn interesting. So again, put that one on your calendar. I don't know when it's going to release, but it looks good. So... Here we go. I'm going to skip forward a little more now to Chrono Odyssey. Keep in, mo keep in mind, pardon me, that this one is built with the Unreal Engine 5 or UE5. Chrono Odyssey is a Chrono. Korean open world MMORPG made in Unreal Engine 5 that will be available on both PC and console. Nice. This game looks absolutely stunning, and the recent gameplay trailer is quite promising. It includes classic fantasy RPG classes such as Archer, Warrior, Berserker, and Mage. Ah, a little bit of Diablo style in there. But it also introduces guns, hammers, and oh. as the game's name implies, various time-bending abilities. Chrono Odyssey kind of gives me BDO vibes with its graphics, epic-looking combat, and giant monsters. But beyond that, the details are scarce. Yes, so, I mean, I'll be honest, I I remember long time ago, George and I were excited for a game called Ion, and it looked great, and then it just disappointed so i mean fingers crossed they got it right on this one but it does look pretty good here's hoping let's skip forward to path of exile 2 and before you flame me for saying that's not an mmorpg i know but it's still in the list and he's going to explain to you why path of exile 2 not really an mmorpg but i know all my mmo friends will be playing this game as soon as it comes out path of exile 2 is a free-to-play next-gen arpg that promises to outdo its very successful prequel as well as offer a much more in-depth gameplay experience to competitor diablo 4 which released in 2023 yeah so there you heard it it's basically a d4 not a clone but it's a competitor and it sure does have some uh, diablo-esque looking vibes going on here but let's kick forward a little more and check out a little more of this one earlier in the year grinding gear games released a new gameplay trailer for poe2 and an announcement for the first closed beta which begins june 7th 2024 june 7 2024 the closed beta is coming i'm not sure how you can sign up for it but i would recommend maybe going to their website and or sending them an email or saying hey i'm a huge youtuber send me a code <laughs> or whatever you need to do these days so anyways uh, let's skip forward quite a bit here to Core Punk. This is a really cool fusion type uh, game that I look forward to. You'll see here. 
Corepunk is quite a unique MMORPG as it tries to bridge the gap between MOBA and MMO, with top-down gameplay and Fog of War, which serves as a way to incentivize exploration in the open world. Yeah, so top-down, kind of fusion-ish, I get some League of Legends, but with higher contrast and saturation values type uh, artwork, not uh, not necessarily gameplay, don't get me wrong, but uh, let's check out a little more here. Besides the MOBA-like combat system, you still have your classic MMORPG systems like nice. gathering, crafting quests, randomly generated mm. dungeons, and raids. The game had a beta test fairly recently. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to play it, but next beta test, I'll jump in and make a first impressions video. Nice. So far, Corepunk is looking highly likely to release sometime in 2024. So there you go. It might be this year, which would be nice. You always, you know, if a game looks great, but it's 10 years away, uh, <laughs> Elder Scrolls, I'm looking at you. <laughs> you know, it's hard to stay uh, pumped up for it, but this one could be coming soon. So anyways, I'm going to skip forward to another one here. This is one that I personally want, and I played all of the, I mean, all the space shooters when I was a young guy. Yeah, just check it out. With its crowdfunding of over $500 million, Star Citizen. Star Citizen is the most ambitious game ever. So it's an ambitious game. It's got $500 million. Yeah, that's how much money it's raised. Not like a million or two. Five, half a billion. Yeah, keep that. Yeah, half a billion. That's just madness. Let's keep going. And whilst after a decade in development, we still have no full release date, we did finally get an incredible gameplay trailer for Squadron 42, the single player campaign version of Star Citizen earlier in 2023. Star Citizen has been playable in a testing state for a few years and does have a dedicated community, some of which make epic videos about all of the latest updates. Mm -hmm. For many though, the game has been in development for so long that they've just tuned out. One thing's for certain though, if Star Citizen ever does release, it will probably be the best sci-fi MMO ever created. So there you go. I, I actually own it and I played a little bit of the beta with my buddy Steph uh, a year and a half ago, a year ago maybe, and it was pretty fun, but again, this game, who the hell knows if it's ever going to release. If it does, yeah, I <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I just, I want to go get some Kill Wrathy. If you're old, if you know, you know. All right, let's go to the last one here uh, at 13 minutes, so we're going to skip forward a couple minutes, and it's called The Quinfall, and it makes a pretty big claim. The Quinn Fool is an upcoming MMORPG that makes the ambitious claim to bring us the largest open world we have ever seen. Yeah, that's a huge claim, people. That That is a huge claim. Uh, <laughs> let's keep going. In Quinfall, your class will be decided by the combination of weapons you equip. You'll be able to have your own shop in the world, play mini games and board games in taverns with other players, explore secret dungeons filled with puzzles, nice. gather, craft, fish, and pretty much do everything your heart desires. It's got a lot going for it so far, not gonna lie. Let's keep going. This is a big promise, and it's possible that Quinfall is attempting too much, which doesn't always turn out too well. The game's release was set to be on January 20th, 2024, according to their Steam page, but the sneaky devs changed it very recently to coming soon, instead launching a closed beta test on January 30th instead. I've not had the chance to play the beta personally, and I'm extremely skeptical that this dev team has managed to pull off such an ambitious project in such a short space of time. Yeah, so there's that, guys. It's kind of sneaky that they would just change it from release date to coming soon. And yeah, they are trying to pull off a whole lot of stuff here. So I'm skeptical as well, but you know what? You never know. Let's just watch the last few seconds and then uh, we'll wrap it up. But based on some of the footage I've seen of the game on YouTube, the Quinfall does seem to be somewhat playable. So it's already surpassed my expectations because I genuinely thought it was a scam. Okay, so low expectations. So there you go, guys. This is a very long video. There's another nine more minutes of this, but... The last, you know, eight or nine games, ten games that he covers don't really interest me, and they're they go in order from the most excited at the beginning to the least excited at the end. So we covered all the big ones and the most exciting ones, other than the Riot game, which I opted to not cover because I don't believe it's going to come out. But uh, there you go, guys. That's my opinion. Check out his video. Check out Heartbeat. Let me know what you think of the video in the description or in the comments below. Thanks for watching.